Hi, it's Wendy Laidlaw here from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. As always, I hope that this podcast finds you well and taking great care of yourself. So today's podcast is titled Toxic Toads and Trolls. So today I'm going to talk about the toxic toads and trolls that mingle in our society and masquerade as humans, when in fact they are slimy individuals. Bufo Marinus is the official dictionary classification for toads. Netflix showed a documentary recently called The Great Hack, Cambridge Analytica, where it explained how social media and trolls are being used by the big and the powerful, who know how to psychologically manipulate people's behaviour, buying habits, and worst of all, political persuasions. And shockingly, how personal data is more valuable than oil. This is worth repeating. Yes, data collected online is more valuable than oil these days. This is because the more information that is gathered can be used against us to influence the many elements of our life. This is why I rarely read the newspapers anymore and merely peruse the headlines on the way to and from the supermarket. That's enough to give anyone anxiety or a reminder of why I don't succumb to one element of our social conditioning. I turn off the radio when the news comes on and turn off the TV when the nightly news broadcasts its sensationalist attention-grabbing news headlines. I'm on a news diet because it's not balanced news that we are presented with, with the good and the bad intermixed in the world, but merely designed to keep us all in a high state of high alert and anxiety, reminding us of all the ills, the war, the famine, the destruction, disasters, and of course, toxic toads and trolls in the world who have a hole in their body where a heart should be. You see, women with endometriosis have a higher degree of sensitivity and I believe emotional intellect than the average human. It is common for me to marvel at the amazing women that apply to work with me. They have endured literally uh, decades of pain and suffering, but never given up and have such determination, dedication and desire to get well that this is why I am in the process of getting actual real medals made for my successful students. But my point is, this degree of sensitivity, as I've mentioned in previous podcasts, is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of strength. Strength to keep going when the toads and the trolls see their beautiful souls and are drawn to their light and want to stamp all over it or snuff it out. My women with endometriosis never give up and learn how to empower themselves to ultimately get relief and remission and make sure that you never give up either. Which leads me to my book that tracked my own journey to relief and remission. When I wrote my book, Heal Endometriosis Naturally Without Painkillers, Drugs or Surgery back in 2016, I did so with you in mind. It was written as a gift to any woman who was suffering from endometriosis and adenomyosis and was sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, yet desperately wanted to try a different pathway from the medical machine. I made a promise and a vow to myself that I would share all that I had learned with the world so that they, so that you could become pain free. Something that doctors told me was just not possible and that put everything that I learned in one place for other women. I never wanted any other woman to go through what I had gone through. That was my drive. That was my purpose. That was my passion. I kept a journal throughout my healing journey to track, to trace, to measure what worked for my hugely sensitive body and what it repelled with vigor and with great noise. I questioned many times whether my life was worth living as I felt I literally had no life during those early painful days of endometriosis. I merely existed and existed poorly. I struggled to get through an hour or a morning, let alone a day, in the darkest years of my endo life. Back then I questioned endlessly why no one was able to help me. So I decided with great resolve and determination a few years ago that if no one else could help me, I was to help myself. I questioned why I'd come across so many uncaring individuals in the medical field and why they did what they did. So I decided that when I was well enough and I was helping women, that I would be that caring mentor for all of my clients. Did these professionals who had spent countless years training to get their profession actually genuinely care? Many times for me, it felt like that answer was no. Their treatment was brisk and heart, uh, heartless and harsh. And the times they questioned the existence of my pain, insinuating that I was making it up, was downright incredulous then why were they doing what they were doing? 
I would later learn that for some it was mainly to do with power and control rather than any form of caring, but more on that later. I had many dark nights of the soul on my journey. The deep pondering and heart-wrenching wails and sobs that would reverberate round and through my body whilst trying to get answers to the many, many questions I had. Why was I here? What was happening to my body? Why was I in so much pain? Was I dying? Maybe I should end this suffering for myself. Maybe I'd be better off if I was dead. Those days and times were somber to say the least. The hours, the days, the weeks, the months that would turn into years of a wasted life and a wasting body. I remember one unpleasant doctor saying to me, well, Wendy, your body is basically decommissioned like an old rusty neglected car. I was like, ouch. <laughs> The labels, the names, the words that were banded about without any regard to the impact on the person receiving them. Yet something bigger inside me beckoned. Whilst one part of me wanted to end the suffering and end my life at times, another deeper, wiser part kept encouraging me to question and question and question again. I used to joke that I was actually born and popped out my mother's womb saying, but why, but why, but why? I never felt I fitted into my family. I always wondered if they'd maybe put the baby in their own um, plastic cot and swap the names around. I'd always felt different. That's because I was, but not in the way that I thought it would turn out. Different in a good way. I would question the unquestionable growing up. I would ask why regularly to try and understand what was happening and going on. You see, my family was one of the many toxic families that women with endometriosis grew up in. It is very common for women with endometriosis to grow up in highly toxic family environments without even knowing it. To end up being the parent to their parents when they are mere children who are naturally only seeking a safe and secure parentage. They grow up feeling different and questioning why. Questioning the status quo of what is portrayed as normal in inverted commas or pretending out in public when the reality is very different behind closed doors. The feeling of being different, the isolation, the loneliness takes up residence in one's heart, body and mind at an early age. Yet the soul and the spirit know that this is all part of the training. The training for a greater purpose, the training for a mission and for the legacy that you will leave behind after you've put your own endometriosis and adenomyosis into remission. Well, that's my belief anyway. I see many wonderful, beautiful and courageous women successfully come through my online programs and recognize the beauty that lies within them and the possibilities that now lie ahead of them in ways that they never thought possible before. Personally, I endured so much emotional, psychological, spiritual, financial, religious and physical suffering and pain that this is what drives me now to ensure that no other woman I know ever has to endure the path that I had, that, that I can share that there is another way. Whilst one part of me looks back to say that that was your training ground, Wendy, sometimes another part feels like the occasional wave of sadness and grief of what might have been or could have been and the waste of decades. Yet I would not change a single element of my past for I would not be who I am now or doing what I'm doing now, which is being an advocate for women with endometriosis and to say, I believe in you and your body's ability to heal and I can help you. I look at my own children whom I have such pride and admiration for, the children that the doctor said I would never have, mainly because they're open to learning how there are many different types of species of humans and people in the animal kingdom where you have different species of animals. In the animal kingdom, the mother's job is to take care of her young and teach them how to look out for the dangers in the wild, in the safari or in the jungle. To educate them to watch for the markings of a snake in the grass or a poisonous spider or a predator that has only one intention in mind, to destroy and to eat. Sadly, it is the same in the human kingdom. Yet mothers are vilified for protecting the young by the courts and professionals who do not understand how the predators, narcissists, sociopaths and psychopaths work. You just have to read the judgment of Solomon again from the Bible to be reminded of the different types of people. Yet we are conditioned to turn the other cheek. But that human that we are trained to turn the other cheek on may well be a predator who is a family member. 
There are many shades of gray of humans from one extreme to the other, the Mother Teresa's to the dictators. My first awakening to the differences in humans started almost 25 years ago when I fell pregnant with my daughter. I realized early on in the pregnancy and also from the, the threatened miscarriage that this life that was growing inside of me required a different upbringing and level of protection from what I had experienced myself, different from the toxic toads that surrounded me in my family of origin. I would spend the next few decades, and I still continue now, reading all the books I could about how to bring out the best in a child, a person, and develop the human spirit and soul of another human being, especially one that I had brought into the world. I recognize the need to teach my children that despite the fairy tales and religious conditioning, that there are actually bad and dangerous people out there that, that, that they had to learn how to protect themselves from, that I would teach them how to protect themselves from. It is a humbling job to walk along the path with women with endometriosis, especially at the start of their journey, when they are so very scared that they will be the one that this does not work for. And I feel the weight of that responsibility to help encourage, guide and love them and to help them learn to love and protect themselves. To ensure that no subconscious elements of old conditioning and family elements sneak through and pop out and make them question their worth and their value in a world that is full of egotistical and selfishness that, at any, that, that will take any cost to the beautiful souls in the world. When my daughter was born, which was before the days of the internet, I read every book like a hungry woman. The first book I read was called The Hot House Kids, which explained the importance of stopping and taking the time to talk and explain the emerging world around the children as they grew. How to nourish the developing mind, soul and spirit. How many parents do you see shout, scream, criticize and become impatient with their children when the innocent child dares to ask a question or query why. I'm not professing to be a perfect parent by any manner of means, but my drive was to become an inter a, a eternal student and lifelong learner when it came to me and my children. They say the ego seeks the velvet ruts of comfort and familiarity, yet the soul seeks awareness, wisdom and spiritual growth. I observed, I studied, I researched and became hungry for knowledge of how to install all the essential aspects of feeding the person, the developing soul and spirit with what it needed to grow safely. How to protect my children from my history and the ancestral line of abuse and suffering. How to stop the centuries of put downs and demeaning remarks about women and children. To really experiment with how, with firm and loving boundaries to help my children develop the emotional and spiritual tools to survive in this world. Equally, whilst I was focused on that for many years, I would learn, and only when I was bedridden for three years, that these innocent children also needed protecting from the very people who were supposed to be the nearest and dearest. Protecting from people who should have been and are expected to be the safest people to them. That was the biggest shock to me. To have to protect your child from one of their parents messes with your head. You see, I came from a very disturbed family of origin and sought beyond all measure to recreate the ideal perfect family that I never had. This is quite a common desire for women if they've had experienced abuse in their family or trauma or disruption to try and create a safe environment. The majority of women with endometriosis have such huge hearts. And the other day I was thinking about the heart of the South that resides deep, deep down in the body of a woman in the pelvis, and that is the uterus. The very fact that society in the medical field have found no alternative to the barbaric and harmful removal of a woman's sex organ via a hysterectomy speaks volumes. Can you imagine a man accepting his private parts being chopped off? No, I don't think so. For goodness sake, we can fly to the moon and, and land on planet Mars, yet the medical industry, industry has been so super slow to stop and or find another way for women with endometriosis in the medical field and not present any other solutions. Until now, of course, with the healing naturally. But back to the protection of the soul and the spirit in the developing child. It is said, give me a child for the first six years and I'll show you the man or the woman. This means how impressionable and fragile and vulnerable the mind, body and spirit is as it is born, develops and grows. 
how many critical developmental periods happen in the mind and brain as well as the physical body that go on to make you who you are today. The child is said to walk around in a semi-hypnotic state for the first six years of its life and literally absorb its surroundings and environment, taking in and on into its heart, mind, body and soul, whatever it sees, hears, feels and senses. In some cases, what it sees is too overwhelming. So overwhelming to the nervous system and to the thinking part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, therefore switches off or goes into fight, flight, freeze, fold, protective mechanisms. If a young child witnesses repeated arguments when a frightening, abusive or alcoholic parent comes home at night and or causes regular distress, this upsets, pat this sets up patterns of behavior within the developing brain and the neural pathways are wired to fire and then repeated patterns and triggers become ingrained in the nervous system, affecting the hormones, the body digestion and also causing great anxiety. The child will literally mirror their reactions and behaviors subconsciously. So when a woman grows up and recognizes any small similarity, then it can feel terrifying to her nervous system. And that is one cause of many for stress in the body that subconsciously is trying to be overridden. For me, I remember looking down at my daughter growing in my stomach in awe, but with equal measure of fear. What if I mess her up? I knew I was having a girl early on because of an ultrasound. But what if I get it wrong? And my biggest fear, what if I became like my mother? My father, who knew that this was one of my biggest fears, would actually use that phrase against me in a public showdown decades later to try and shame me into silence and submission. You're so like your mother, he would shout. Yet, from birth, I knew I was different. And that's what I mean when I say different. I am not like my mother or my father or anyone else in my toxic family. I've had an innate ability to recognize that how I thought and how I felt was so very different. And I'm pleased to share that finally, I'm comfortable with that difference. That difference helped me to develop an innate and high degree of sensitivity to people, places and things. And especially for a woman with endometriosis and adenomyosis, to be able to tap into their souls, to feel their pain and their fear, yet not get caught up in the helplessness as I have a proven pathway now to guide them. My sensitivity and difference has helped me to sharpen my instincts in this very toxic world around all types of toads whose intention is not to do good in the world. I can normally sense them and smell them before I see them nowadays. So I thank my past for it has helped me make me who I am now. So not only was I able to protect my children from the very people who were supposed to watch out for them, but also the many wolves, vultures and sharks and predators out there in the world. My counsellor said to me the other day how finally she recognised that I realised that it is a jungle out there, that there are a lot of bad people in the world. You see, somewhere at some point growing up, I thought that all the people in the world were great, good and kind and that it was me that was bad. Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any manner of means. I'm perfectly imperfect, by the way, but I have been able to wipe the, the, the steam away from the mirror on the glass to see the world as it is and not how I so desperately wanted it to be. Growing up, I tried to mold myself into this perfect person and be all that my parents, ex-husbands, bosses and so-called friends wanted me to be. I ended up miserable, depressed in physical and emotional pain and my soul deeply saddened. Whilst endometriosis was something I'd had for over three decades and an impact in my life in many ways, it has been a great teacher. That period of my life was the training, in inverted commas, training on how to recognize toxic toads, training on how to recognize the five Ps or the five poisons that affected my body, the training on how to recognize equally these amazing beautiful souls that exist in the world and training on how to help women heal their bodies their soul and their hearts naturally it is coming on five years since i've been able to put my endometriosis and adenomyosis into remission and with each passing day month and year i feel so blessed for the lessons and the training now i have a new and healthy relationship with myself I come back into the seat of myself every day and work on staying in the present moment and keeping my awareness sharp. No longer do I waste time with 
toxic toads or people who have an ego the size of Europe and a huge black hole where a heart should be. No longer do I spend days crying when a troll who clearly has the intellect the size of a toad writes something scathing and, and, and uh, upsetting uh, a review about my book with little basis or understanding why I actually wrote my book in the first place. I wrote my book to help other women out of pain, to give women with endometriosis hope and a proven pathway. This particular recent spineless toad is probably the very person inflicting insufferable pain upon a woman with endometriosis right now and hides behind a screen spewing their venom and vitriol out onto the internet. The dictionary definition is sound in depicting a troll as an ugly creature depicted as either a giant or a dwarf. In short, basically a bully. I still struggle that these types of people get such pleasure from their bitterness but I've given up long ago in trying to understand that type of troll. There are many books on endometriosis based on medical research and scientific studies. And of course they say follow the money because many of these expensive studies and researches are funded by the multi-billion and trillion dollar companies that have an agenda. And sadly, it is invariably not in the women's welfare or interest. But there are very a few books with genuine success stories from women who used to struggle with endometriosis and adenomyosis and have actually successfully put it into remission, like myself, for over five years. I would have actually chopped off my right arm for this information, which, by the way, as you know, I give freely with a free paperback book if you go to healendometriosisnaturallybook.com and I just ask you to pay shipping. And the reason I offer this book for free is this book was written to share my story and share what worked for me so that it could free you. What worked at a time when the tears used to cascade down my face with such regularity that I constantly had a box of tissues in my hand. It was when my son said to me, why does daddy treat you like a Roman? That I would finally wake up to what my life had become. How skewed my beliefs had become and that I was being treated less than and more poorly than my dog was. My book was written with the soul and the soul, S-O-U-L, purpose of empowerment and freedom and knowledge for other women with endometriosis. Not a sad, heartless troll with as much empathy as a mosquito as it bites you again and again. I have to admit that publishing my book, which was like giving birth to my fourth child, Chinti, my chocolate Labrador dog, I view as my third child, was one of the scariest things I have ever done in my life at that time. I would then go on to do even more scary things like Facebook Lives and recording podcasts. Having grown up in a household, an environment where you kept safe by staying silent, keeping in the shadows and not upsetting anyone, it took the clear focus of my greater purpose to give me the strength to press that button on the internet that day to publish my book. And I published that book for you. If you are listening to this podcast or watching this video, I have literally spent hours drafting, writing, and then recording this podcast for you and the previous podcast and all the Facebook lives and all the other content that I prepare. This is not something egotistical at work, but this is for the, the purpose to free you from your pain and suffering. I always believed that what had happened to me was for a greater purpose. And I would press that publish now button and then dive under my duvet in bed for a few days for fear of the expected attacks from trolls and toads. That was what it was like for, for, that's what it was like growing up. If you dared to stand out or stand up, you got slapped back down to size. But for me, publishing my book, my podcast or my programs or Facebook was not about me. It's never been about me. It's quite, I'm actually quite a private and reserved person by nature. This was all about you. Yes, you, who is listening to this right now or reading this right now or watching this right now. Even doing the production of these podcasts still fills me with a little fear each time I do it, I must admit. In the back of my mind, you're thinking, you never know. A, will anyone ever listen to this? B, will it help anyone? And C, will they even like it? <coughs> Excuse me. It is so much easier to interview a successful student from one of my online programs or someone I think you might find interesting. But to keep putting myself out here and there is uncomfortable. But I can live with the discomfort if it helps you also come out from behind the shadows. 
because I am yet to work with a woman with endometriosis or adenomyosis who does not deserve to be in the spotlight. A woman that deserves her very own seat at the table of life. To feel safe, to feel secure and loved for who she is. And of course, to be pain free. Free from the emotional, psychological and of course physical pain. It's not an easy path, but it's so worth it. So to those trolls and toads out there, I say go back and scurry under your stone. Or if you are going to criticize or attack women with endometriosis, go and grow a heart. Fill the black void that aches inside you and do some good in the world. Whilst even a troll or a toad are entitled to have their opinions, and I do not expect everyone to like what I do or what I wrote in my book, but obviously that was my first attempt at being an author, I do expect that we each deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. Any form of troll attacks are weak, futile and cowardice shots for no reason. Believe it or not, I have had troll attacks from men who never suffered, not even one painful period in their lives. Just sad, sad people. But I always like to think all and every aspects of our life are here to teach us and help us grow. It's about preservation of self and soul. So the trolls and toads can go back into their hole and let those with light shine. I hope I get the opportunity to work with you one day so that I can help you write your own book, share your own success story and teach you how to bat away those terrible trolls and toads that roam around our world like black vermin that they are. Until then, never, ever, ever give up and know that I can help you. And remember to celebrate your difference and know that it is for a greater purpose, a purpose that will become clear in time and that I can help you keep you number one to your health.